10.2, we look at Taylor series. When we say series, uh, it's implied that we mean infinite series. Uh, so we're going to take the idea of the Taylor polynomial and go infinite with it. So uh, let me show you what I mean. So for example, uh, at the beginning of 10.1, uh, we looked at f of x equals e to the x, right? And we um, it took a lot of derivatives, right? We went through that whole procedure for finding a Taylor polynomial to the nth degree. Um, and we came to this. This is like our introductory example. We ended up finding the third degree Taylor polynomial was 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1 sixth x to the third. So the idea is, um, skipping all the details here, of course, since we did it last time. So the idea is that e to the x can be approximated by that uh, here is a third degree Taylor polynomial. Uh, now what happens is, if you recall from that section, the more terms there are, the more accurate it becomes. So just having that first term, uh, not very, not a very good approximation, just one. Uh, when you add on x, okay, well, still, it's okay near zero, but uh, get very far from zero, not a good, very approximation. Add on, you know, like tack on, you know, if you will, one half x squared, and now it's it's actually pretty decent approximation if you're near zero. And then if you add on that fourth term, one sixth x to the third, now that models it actually quite well, but hey, we don't need to stop there. We could keep going through that procedure to find a Taylor polynomial and add more and more and more terms. Uh, so here, uh, you know, I just point out we've got four terms. It's the third degree Taylor polynomial, but we always start at degree zero. So degree zero, one, two, and three gives us four terms. So then the question becomes, hey, if this is an approximation, how many terms should we get in that Taylor polynomial so that it will equal e to the x perfectly? And it won't be an approximation anymore. We'll actually have it exactly. Well, what's going to happen here? So the, we realize the more terms there are, the more accurate it becomes. Well, no term ever gets it to us perfectly, but if it always is getting more accurate, how many terms do we need to equal? Infinitely many. And well, we see that answer a lot when we study calculus, right? How many rectangles do we need to approximate the area of an integral perfectly? Well, you need infinitely many rectangles, right? It's exactly the same idea here, just instead of adding areas of rectangles, we're adding on more terms to approximate a function. So the more terms we get, the better an approximation. To get it perfectly, you need infinitely many terms. And so when we say a Taylor series, we're implying that it's of infinite degree. There are infinitely many terms. And you'll have that exactly what you want. Okay, so let's define uh, the Taylor series. Let me just show you the whole thing. Uh, the Taylor series of f of x, uh, we're always going to center at zero, and that, that's going to be the case for the rest of the chapter. Um, back in the last section, we centered at other values. Uh, you know, you had some, we had one example in the lecture, you had some homework problems centering other, other where, uh, otherwise. From here on out in the chapter, we're just going to center everything at zero. Keep it simple. So we're going to say, we're trying to approximate f of x, f of x will equal the series. And you notice the only change here to the Taylor polynomial centered at 0 is that instead of going from k equals 0, let me zoom in a little bit because that's kind of small there in that notation. Uh, instead of starting, excuse me, we still have k equals 0, but now instead of being an n because an nth degree, it's the infinite degree, k equals 0, and we don't stop until infinity. Still a k, x to the k, where a k equals the kth derivative of f evaluated at 0 divided by, and that's k factorial.
All right. Now, there's a catch. Okay. We also need to define, zoom back out a little bit, we need to define the interval of convergence. And we'll make a little bit more sense of this. Uh, a lot of theory going on in this section. Uh, the interval of convergence, the x values for which the series will equal f of x. OK, so when we look here, uh, for an f of x that we're trying to um, get a polynomial representation for, so it turns out, in most cases, there is a limited number of x values which, for which it will actually equal the function. And we call those x values the interval of convergence. If we go outside that interval of convergence, we no longer have the equality. Okay, let me pause and just give you an example of that. He's like, Wait, what, what are you talking about here? I, I thought if we have infinitely many terms, it is going to equal. Yes, it will equal, but only for certain x values. Hopefully, the example you're going to see will help clarify that. So let me show you um, another very uh, well-known function and its infinite series. So the most well-known is e to the x. But here's another big one. Um, one over 1 minus x. So it turns out it has a very simple infinite series. Uh, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third. And you would just keep adding the next power of x. We write plus dot 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 plus x to the n plus dot dot dot, implying that it goes on forever. Um, and we'd say that's the nth term right there. Okay, so the, the general term, if you will. Okay, let's look at some different values of x, and we'll get an idea. Oh, I guess I've got this statement first. Uh, this equality is not true for all x values. Okay, so that is the Taylor series for it, but this is only going to be equal for certain values of x here. Uh, the interval of convergence is only true for negative 1, x between negative 1 and positive 1. So negative 1 to positive 1, we'd say, is the interval of convergence. If we stray outside of that, excuse me, we stray outside of that, then it, that equality is not going to hold anymore. Let me show you what I mean. Let's pick x equals 1 half. Okay, so that falls inside the interval, so it's going to work out to be true. If we plug in 1 half for all of the x's, 1 over 1 minus 1 half equals 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half squared plus 1 half to the third plus dot 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 plus 1 half to the n power and then plus dot 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 continuing on forever. We just keep adding the next power of 1 half. Let's look, is this really true? Well, what do we get when we take 1 over 1 minus 1 half? Well, you might grab a calculator uh, to do that. It equal. It turns out to be 2, right? Well, 1 over a half, you take the reciprocal, right? We get 2. OK, so on the left side, it equals 2. What happens on the right side? Now, we can't add infinitely many terms, obviously. But we can add several of them, and we're going to see, yeah, I think I, I can be convinced that if I kept adding more and more terms, I would get exactly two after I did infinitely many of them. Uh, let me just pull my calculator up here, and we'll take a look at this, hopefully. Oh, I don't have a whole lot of lighting right now. Yeah, I don't, oh, well, that kind of, grab your calculator as well. This kind of works. So I'll take 1, you know, just kind of following there, 1 plus a half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth. Let's just go up to plus 1 eighth, what I've got on the page there. What do we get when we add those? Wow, 1.875. Wow, so after four terms, 
I'm at 1.875. What if we kept adding, you know, along the same pattern? The next one would be plus 1 over 16, and we get a little bit closer. Plus 1 over 32, and you see we're getting closer to 2, plus 1 over 64, plus 1 over 128. Let's stop here. Like, wow, okay, so every time I add the next power of 2, I get a little bit closer to what this thing is going to equal. And obviously, I'll never quite get there because I need infinitely many numbers. But that's that's like almost like a limit. Like, that's what it's approaching as I keep adding. Mm, all right. So I guess I can be convinced that for 1 half, yes, it really does work. Let's pick a value of x that is not inside the interval. How about x equals 3? OK, now this one is going to be really obvious. Plug in 3 for all the x's, right? 1 over 1 minus 3, 1 plus 3, plus 3 squared, plus 3 to the third, plus dot, 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 plus 3 to the n, plus dot, dot, dot. Hey, are these equal? No, definitely not. I mean, what happens over here? That's 1 over negative 2. That's negative 1 half. What's over here? 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27. All these power. These are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, I think I could add, throw in here, negative 1 half. What it, all this is going to add up to infinity. I mean, certainly that's not. This is just getting, just, just blowing up on this side. And that's negative a half. No, these are not equal. OK, so this did not work. That's for sure. OK, hopefully I made my point that Taylor series only works for these x values, for this particular example. OK, what do I have to say down here? Um, we're just going to define some terms. Actually, these terms we've seen way back at the beginning of the semester, um, some vocabulary, if the x value causes the series to be finite. So that's what happened when x equaled 1 half. The right side was slowly adding up to 2. If the x value causes the series to be finite, then we say the series converges, and it will equal f of x. So we saw that. Uh, word converges back when we were doing uh, improper integrals, right? If you do an integral and you get a finite answer, we say the integral converges. Same thing here. It's just with the series. If the series is finite, then it converges and it will equal f of x. If, it, uh, if the x value does not cause the series to be finite, if the x value causes the series to be infinite, then the series diverges, meaning it adds to infinity, and it will not equal f of x. And of course, that's what we got back here with x equals 3. Uh, so we're going to use that same language, converges, diverges. We have the interval of convergence. OK, let's stop this video here. We'll look at uh, the first example coming up.